Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done. And you've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is forevermore. You have been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. Thank you, Jesus. He is forevermore. Father, we judge the faithful. Father, we lift up your name. You are faithful. The word says, faithful is he that promised. Lord, we judge the faithful. We worship you, Abba, Father, for who you are. You are glorious in holiness. You are God all by yourself. We exalt your name. We lift up your name above every other name. Father, hallowed be thy name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for who you are to us. Gracious Father, the monarch of the universe, the ancient of days, Glory to your name forever. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Good evening to you. Good morning, wherever you are connecting from. Hallelujah. God bless you. By the grace of God, God has been teaching us the mystery of waiting upon the Lord. Glory to God. We talked about all the things we need to know about waiting on the Lord. I believe by the grace of God, this is the third video we're making. Glory to God. We talked about how to wait on the Lord. Glory to God. And now God wants us to talk about renewing our strength as we wait on the Lord. And when we gather strength, we soar like the eagle. Glory to God. You see, but those who wait upon the Lord shall not faint. Glory to God. But the truth is that even the strongest people get tired at times. But God's power and strength will never diminish, will never fade away. God is never tired or too busy to hear and help us to listen to us. His strength is our source of strength. Glory to God. We don't have any power of our own. You see, when you feel exhausted, when you feel like life is crushing you, glory to God. When you feel tired in your spirit, When you feel tired, even in your physical body, or feel like feel life is crushing on you, or you feel like peradventure you cannot go any step, you cannot go another step, remember, remember, you can call upon the Lord to renew your strength. Hallelujah. Part of trusting in the Lord is expecting 
that his promise of strength will help us to rise above life difficulties, turbulences. God loves us. Scripture says he loves us with eternal love. Glory to God. God loves us and wants the best for us. All you need to do is relax. Be confident that his purposes are right. Glory to God. God has the power to control all of life, including yours. And so through your faith, hold on to the promises. Hold on to that prophetic declaration you received or that prophecy you received, the promises of God. Even though your faith may be wavering or weak, hold on. Hold on tightly to it. And you will begin to experience the strength you need to go, to go on. Glory to God. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall work and not faint. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Glory to God. Isaiah 40, if you read from verse 29 to 31, Glory to God. But those who wait upon the Lord shall not faint because their strength is renewed while they wait. But those who wait upon the Lord shall not faint because their strength is renewed while they wait. Waiting upon the Lord is like Resting in him while he charges our batteries. Resting in the Lord. Entering into the rest of God. Glory to God. And then he recharges us. Glory to God. It's a period of recharging. Even the elite athletes, they must train, of course, eat well and rest in order to perform at their best. And so this is a period that God, we're taking the rest in God. We're relaxing because somebody's already doing the job. Somebody's behind the scene. Glory to God. It says he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, it increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He gives power to the weak. Let the weak say, I am strong. I'll probably talk about a contest of this scripture. But after explaining all the greatness and glory of God in the preceding verses in 
Isaiah 40. Now Isaiah explains another benefit that the children of Israel, we can receive from our God. He gives us his great power. Glory to God. Notice who God gives power to. The weak, the feeble. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Glory to God. It takes meekness. It says it gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases their strength. Those who are proud and confident might not or that operate in their own wisdom and strength who receive no strength from God. That's Invariably, you're saying you have it all. You have what it takes. You have power on your own. So it takes humility. And it goes for that to say, even the youths shall faint and be weary. Those who taught themselves strong find themselves weak. God's strength, God's strength is reserved for those who know they are weak and know they have no might. Glory to God. I always need God's power. I don't have any power of my own. That is the attitude. And it says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. How do we receive this strength from the Lord? We receive it as we wait on the Lord. The idea, the whole idea between behind waiting on the Lord is not a passive sitting around until the Lord does something. We talked about that in the previous meeting. Yes, God gives us strength, but we don't expect it to come as if he were pouring it into us as we sit around passively. He brings it to us as we seek him. And rely on him. Instead of our own strength. Glory to God. I said it before, sometimes you might be going through a situation. And God will just be looking. You have prayed. Probably not even prayed. But God will just stand by. Waiting for you to come to him, to seek his face. And until you make that, take that step of seeking the face of the Lord, that problem will remain there. Well, sometimes in his mercy, he might as well, he might as well even take care of the situation without you asking. That's grace. But most of the time, depending on the situation, God wants you, want us to go to come to Him. Glory to God. We are also to that we renew our strength. It is strength that was once received when we first came to the Lord in weakness and not in might. Then that strength is renewed as we wait on the Lord. Renew is from a basic meaning to change. It comes to me to put on afresh. Here in this context, keeping poop, uh, keep putting on fresh strength, strength, new strength. And it says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. This is the measure of strength that God gives us. Strength to soar about everything else. Strength to rise above limitations. Glory to God. 
And he says, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the purpose of the strength that the Lord gives us. So that when we run, we don't get tired. When we work, we don't faint. It doesn't matter if we're running. It doesn't matter if we're working. The bottom line is like God gives us strength. Strength to move forward and progress even in him. This is not strength where you show off. But strength to go forward in. Glory to God. If you go to that scripture, Isaiah 40, 29, the week there. And if you go to verse 30, the faint are the same word. The same thing, which means failure through loss or inherent loss. Failure through loss, failure through loss. Failure through loss, loss of inherent strength. Then you go to verse 30, you hear weary, weary. Has a different kind of, it has a different meaning. It means exhaustion because of the hardness of life. But the bottom line is if we are worn out for either reason, whether it be weak, whether it be being faint or weary, God is saying that he is available to give us strength on one condition, if we will wait on him. Glory to God. Notice the order, because it seems very weird, strange. First, we mount up with wings like eagles, then we run. Finally, we work. So it's mounting, running, and walking. Not in chronological order. Seems way out of order. Glory to God. But if it is apparently not out of order, because first we recognize that we sow her into sow her up into our heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according to scripture, Ephesians 2 6. When Jesus was raised from the dead, the Bible says he's at the right hand of the Father. And we, when we got saved, we are sitting in heavenly place with Christ. And then we set our, ourselves on the course to run the race. The race. Then we're in a good place to walk with the God on a daily basis. So it is aligned with scripture. Glory to God. We soar up into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then we set ourselves on the course to run the race set before us. And then we are in a good place to walk the walk. Colossians 2, verse number 6. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, 31. Very powerful scripture. It's one of the most recognized scriptures in the Bible and a favorite among most of its comforting and encouraging words. Glory to God. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Something is spectacular about this scripture. 
the imagery of an eagle. Soaring with its powerful wings evo evokes to me a vivid simile that we too, as believers, as believers in Christ, can possess the strength, the boldness, the serenity of this majestic feathered bird, even in our faith work with God. Glory to God. And so what do we what does it mean? What does it mean in this Bible verse to soar on wings like eagles? Glory to God. The book of Isaiah is one of the most studied works of the Bible. The pages record a vast array of information and revelation historical accounts of the people of Israel, judgment and prophecies entailing their impending defeat by the Babylonians, as well as their consequential 70-year exile as a punishment for their idolatry and disobedience towards the Lord. So Isaiah the prophet prophesies about the birth, the ministry, the death, and the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the, this famous book. Though the tone of the, if you study from first chapter two all the way to chapter 39, is very strict and dedicated to prophesizing, prophesying about what will happen to God's people, to the Jewish nation. Glory to God. But if you read from Isaiah 40 to 66, the tone of the prophet's narratives changed. Glory to God. You will notice a change in, 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 in the tone. Here you're going to see or meet up with the Jewish exiles 450 years later, during their current captivity in Babylon. Secondly, you begin to uh, uh, witness the harsh truths of the earlier chapters are now replaced by words of comfort and encouragement and God's impending absolution, starting from Isaiah 41. He says, comfort, comfort my, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. This is Professor Isaiah talking. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins, a voice of the one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged place is a plain. Glory to God. God is comforting the people. The tone changed from verse chapter 40. It's no longer harsh. Glory to God. And so in Isaiah 40, 31, the prophet is encouraging the exiled Jewish community to believe God's promises of freedom and in meantime, wait until he releases them from their sentence. Glory to God. However, this form of waiting is not passive. It is active. Isaiah urges the Israelites to wait with hope and confident anticipation in spite of their current oppression. And in doing so, they will be filled with such strength and faith that when God releases them, rather than dragging their feet in despondent shame, they will instead soar out of their prison, equipped with faith and confident assurance 
in God's goodness to make the long journey back to Judah. Glory to God. Get ready. Gather all the strength you need. Because when it is over, you'll be able to soar. And then you begin to wonder, why does Prophet Isaiah use the analogy of a soaring ego to bolster the Israelites' faith? The depiction of an ego, the use of an ego as an illustration is an evident teaching tool in the Bible. But the special creatures. Glory to God. And so in order to understand God's comparison of our faith work to the flight of an ego, we need to really understand one of some of the underlying characteristics of this feathered creature. Glory to God. Eagles are born with large, heavy wings. Glory to God. And however, like all other, like other, unlike other birds who flap their wings in order to stay in the air, eagles stretch out their wings and hold them still for the purpose of soaring. And it will also shock you that in order to become airborne, an eagle waits for large atmospheric gusts of winds. And sometimes an eagle will perch and wait for days to catch a wind tamar that can carry it. And so storms, turbulency, provide excellent wind tamars. Glory to God. That an eagle would deliberately seek out a storm rather than avoid it. They face their problem. They don't avoid the storm. It shows that by enduring the temporary atmospheric adversity, they will be projected to clear peaceful skies above. So they wait until it's favorable for them to soar. And so if, if an ego flaps its wings unnecessarily during flight, the excessive use of energy can cause them to die. So they get ready. They wait. So that the, 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 the venturing into the storm of trying to soar prematurely can cause them to die. And so they wait patiently for the right time. Glory to God. The Bible teaches us that we as believers can also possess the features of an ego, the characteristics of an ego, of an ego, sorry. If we choose to wait on God and rely on him, as our source of strength, as the ego relies on a wind current, we can conserve our energy, our spiritual energy, by allowing him, allowing God to direct our paths. Just like the ego uses wind currents to determine his flight path. Glory to God. Furthermore, instead of flapping our wings in an attempt to move in our own strength, we can instead stretch out our wings and soar with minimum effort while allowing the Lord to take us to heights greater than we could ever achieve on our own. Glory to God. God keeps all of the promises he makes to us. That is his nature. That is in his character to keep his words. However, God does not force himself on anybody. 
He gives us free will to choose our own path of destiny at our own cost. But those who hope in the Lord. The promise that God makes us in the Bible verse of soaring on, egg, on wings like eagle is one that he will fulfill for each and every believer. However, this realization of living a victorious, faith-confident life will only be experienced by those who choose to place their trust in God and wait with hope an assured expectation of the fulfillment of his promise. Glory to God. We can soar like eagles today. You can make the decision today to live a victorious, faith-filled life. Instead of shouldering your own burdens, hand them over to God. Instead of trying to work out your problems with your own strength, let God fight your battles. He said, I'll fight your battles and you hold your peace. Instead of trying to force events according to your thing, wait on God and trust in his perfect timing. He says, he makes all things beautiful in his time. There's a timing. You just got to keep on holding on to the faith, trusting the process. Let it go and let God be God. And in doing so, he will infuse you with such energy and faith-filled confidence that will allow you to soar to greater heights of revelation, peace, and love. God intends for us, his children, to live an abundant life until it overflows. Life of overflow. Therefore, if the burdens of life are weighing you down by dark, threatening clouds, place your trust in God and wait with confident anticipation and hope in him. For if you do so, God will give you such faith-filled confidence that will allow you soar with wings like an eagle to ride out any storm, any turbulence in order to reach the blue, sun-filled skies of victory triumphantly. Glory to God. Just hang in there. If thou faint in the day of adversity, yes, thy strength is small. Proverbs 24.10 If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Gather strength. Gather strength. Holy Spirit will help you. Don't rely on your own power. Don't rely on your own strength. Glory to God. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. God gives us his own strength. And we know that God's strength is not small. And so we refuse to faint in the day of adversity. You will not be taken over by that turbulence, by that storm. You can speak to the storm after the order of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he will obey you. Glory to God. You have been given the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus at all, in all circumstances and in all situations to cause changes, to effect changes. Just wait. Renew your strength, your spiritual strength. Glory to God. 
said he will fill you with strength. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. Your strength is being renewed by God himself while you wait. You're getting the rest. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. Because when strength comes, then you can mount wings as eagles. Then you can fly. You can run. And you will not be weary. You can work the work and not faint. The Lord bless you. The Lord empower you. It is well with you. Father, we're declaring that the, we don't have any power of our own. We don't have any strength of our own. You are the source of our strength, we find the Lord. Grant us the spirit of humility to humble ourselves, to acknowledge that we don't have any power of our own, that we don't have any strength of our own. And Lord, in any form, in any shape, we have been proud. We have puffed up. We have relied on our own strength. We repent and we ask for mercy. We plead for mercy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for giving us chances after chances. To you alone that it be all the praise and all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. It is well with you. Wait. Be patient. Gather your strength. Renew your strength. As you wait patiently. On the God of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. You are lifted. You are soaring like the eagle. The eagle anointing is coming upon someone under the sound of my voice. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God, for helping us. Amen. Follow us on Facebook, The Transforming Ministries, and on YouTube. Subscribe, and God bless you. Amen. Bye-bye.